Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be actually showing you some of the new announcements which are going to be impacting the SharePoint user interface that have just been announced by Microsoft. This is going to be kind of like a reaction video. I know what some of these things are going to be coming out, um, but I don't, don't know the full details of them. So I'm going to be watching this video, showing you some of the highlights, and giving you my thoughts along the way. So I'm going to use the authoring co-pilot to help me do that. So right here, I get this option. And from here, I can go ahead and either start from a prompt. So to me, this was a kind of a no brainer. I was kind of expecting that because we're using Copilot in Outlook for writing emails instead of Microsoft Word for creating documents, it was kind of a no brainer that eventually we were going to see Copilot uh, pop its head up inside of SharePoint pages. Or I go content. ahead and select this template that I want to start with. I'm writing one that has to do with understanding climate change. And instead of events here i want to contain a section of next steps and until next time i want to pick final thoughts and in many cases when you're building a page such as this you want to ground it on several documents so i'm going to go ahead and so find those documents that i want to use for this one of the things i'm kind of hoping for this is that it's not just based around documents eventually it'll be based around sharepoint pages or ideally the concept of the whole site that it would just kind of understand that this site is about understanding climate change um, and also help with kind of spots where there's content gaps so there might already be some pages uh, which are similar um, but there might be some pages which need to be created and copilot could help with that and once i have these grounded files i can even change some of the settings but let's go ahead and click create and after a few seconds, it takes those prompts as well as those two grounded documents that I provided it and starts generating this page on the fly for me. And now I can go and get some coffee or eat some cake while I slowly see. Hopefully it doesn't take so long that you can actually he's going to make a cup of coffee. That, that would be a while. I'm hoping this is going to be pretty quick. Um, otherwise it kind of defeats the point how it takes my information and creates this page section by section. And what's cool about it is I even see how it's doing the work for me, leveraging the components of the template. And bam, just like that, my page is now created. So this is really cool. I really like this. Personally, I think when it comes to SharePoint pages, I, I wouldn't really expect to be creating the full page with Copilot because although it's really good, it's really useful, and definitely, I suppose, if you already have the information, Word documents, for example, it might do a pretty good job. Um, but in general, just like with any other generative AI, you can tell when it's been written by AI. And I think the engagement of that content would probably be lower. Um, but I would definitely be using it to create ideas for pages, for, provide kind of suggestions for pages, or maybe just the kind of bare bones that I would then potentially be fleshing out further myself. So let's look at some other changes to the user interface in SharePoint. Page, which I'm building for this effort. And I want to go ahead and use design ideas to really elevate it. I start here at the banner area. I'm going to go ahead and select it and open design ideas. And it uses the keywords from there and gives me design ideas. So because it says E. This is really, really useful, actually. And this is a feature I didn't know about until I've just seen this. Um, but actually, this is very much like in PowerPoint, and I use it all the time in PowerPoint. Um, where I've got a couple of images, a bit of text. I don't quite know how I want it to kind of look and come together. It's really good for inspiration. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to pick one of those ideas, but it will definitely get the kind of ball rolling with ideas. So I can go ahead and find this great looking image. Looks pretty good, right? Now let's scroll down, and I have have this section right here that features three images and three text boxes that I provided. Now it's going to take those three information and just, just like that, give me other design ideas. That is amazing. I think that looks fantastic. I really like this um, kind of staggered kind of text image kind of look. Also got this stacked on top of each other. Um, I think that, that there's a lot of ideas here. But again, they're all fantastic. None of them look boring or clunky or, or, or that kind of classic SharePoint look. It all looks very modern, uh, very impressed with this. For how I can lay it out. This one looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and select like, that one. That was my favorite. Now, as I come to the next section, I have just text in this one. Well, this is pretty cool because it'll take this text and actually give me suggestions 
happens like this one that not only breaks up my text, but also gives me image suggestions to make my section look better. And if I want to start from scratch, I can also do that. So I can just add any column section and with blank section support, it gives me ideas that I can start just like that. Building a site usually involves work from multiple people. We're making that easier than ever with Pages co-authoring, where multiple editors can collaborate on the... Again, this feels like a no-brainer. I mean, it's going to be a fantastic feature uh, once co-authoring is properly up and running. But um, it feels like we've had this in Word, Documents, Excel, PowerPoint for so long that it's almost like it's a bit late, this feature coming coming out. But... Um, it's definitely welcomed. I think it's definitely going to make people's lives a lot easier uh, when it comes to building out an intranet um, as part of a team and not just someone who's working on the, by themselves. The same page at the same time, even the same section. And the presence tells you exactly where they are. So far, what I've shown you looks great, but I really have something in mind that is not possible today because we only support one to three columns. I'm excited to introduce flexible sections. With flexible sections, we give you access to 12 columns and you can move elements around and freely resize them as you need. 12 columns. 12. Wow. That that is going to mean yeah, we can create very different looking SharePoint pages now. I mean, I'm trying to work out just by looking at this at a glance how many columns they've got here, but um, if all of these are their own imagery, um, yeah, there must be quite a lot of columns here. So let's keep looking. Let me give you a quick demo of what it looks like. Here I have this section. And just like that, I can go ahead and resize to my heart's content this text. And I can go ahead and move my content around. This is how you really ensure the very best looks on the web are available in SharePoint. I can even go ahead and put it like this, where it's overlapping other elements. I kind of want it to overlap just like that, just a little bit. Change my... I like that kind of bubble effect. And you do see that on a lot of modern looking websites now. They're kind of like bubble and things overlaying each other. So I think that's fantastic. I also like um, what's referred to as glass morphism, which is where there's like, looks like glass panels, which kind of um, are surrounding imagery or text. And I'm already thinking about how potentially you could apply that type of look and feel using these new flexi layouts. Text, move it around, and resize the section as well. So with flexible sections, now you have the full capability. You can expand what parts as you need to and get to the look that you want. If you need inspiration for what you'll be able to build, section templates have been updated with a brand new set of flexible section inspired designs that you can take and customize to make your own. Here is just a quick glance at all the different designs you'll be able to create. Continuing with making your content more compelling, I'm excited to showcase an update to one of our most popular web parts, and a new web part we're introducing called Editorial Card. Back to the Royal Cloud launch page, here I have my hero set up, but I'm excited to showcase we're updating hero with a new layout called Carousel. It'll take your very own information and you can go and have it look like this. And you'll notice the different styles. That's because when the hero not only is in a new carousel, but we have new different styles you can pick from. This will make your top of a page more compelling. And you have different settings to make it look better. Next up, I'm excited to showcase the new... So the carousel thing, I think is fantastic. I think it's something that I get asked about a lot, um, about how we can put carousels into SharePoint designs. And I think that this actually means that we can do this a lot easier. Previously, we had to use web parts like the news web part or things like that to try and fumble our way into having a carousel. Well, this is obviously a dedicated feature. So 
really excited to get my hands on that as well. Editorial card. It gives you a lot of options of configuration. Not only do we give you different overlays, like this image overlay, color block, and split, but you have all these set of metadata that you can configure. So you can go from something that looks like this to cards that look like this. This is all built on the editorial card. Beautiful, right? And yeah. it works with flex sections. Now, there's one more thing I can also do to make my content more compelling. Introducing image shapes. Here we can elevate our images by taking something ordinary like this square picture and using SharePoint image shapes to transform our picture like this. Looks pretty nice now, right? Now let's talk about branding. An organization's identity is critical when building an intranet. A part of that identity is the typography used. Now back to the Project Sphere site, let's go ahead and change the look. From here, I see the new option for font. We've added the ability to not only select from new Microsoft fonts, here's me applying the Aptos, for example, and immediately gets reflected on the page. But because typography is so important for your organization, I can select here Gotham, which has been uploaded for my organization. And just like that, I get to see my organization's custom font applied. And guess what? It's also used in design. I think that, again, this is a feature which really it's asked for all the time. I get questions about it all the time about custom fonts and, and things like that. And I think what they're alluding to here is that you can't upload your own fonts, which is something that you used to be able to do years ago with classic SharePoint. And when they switched over to modern SharePoint, uh, that feature just disappeared um, and you couldn't do that anymore. So I, again, I welcome this feature, but it's again, it's a bit like the co-authoring where I feel like it's something that a lot of people expect should just be there. And it's been years and now, now we've got it. Obviously really fantastic, but um, I think a lot of people just assume you can already do this ideas feature I showcased before. In addition to fonts, I'm super excited to show how we're bringing new multicolor themes to life. Here is our new site branding experience. I can go ahead and click new theme and I can go ahead and select to add a new color. I can choose from my brand color library set up in brand center or I can go ahead and add a new color. Let's do that and click add. I can then go ahead and add other colors. I can see what this color looks like in light and dark mode, but let's look at what a fully fleshed theme looks like. And here is one set up with all the sets of different colors you can see. And you can see that I can look by the different colors and see the page application on the site. I really like the fact that you that it's so detailed of seeing where this is being applied everywhere, because this is, definitely one of the things which has been the problem in the past before with color theming is um, not really knowing what color is going to apply to what element of the page. As well, really giving the power more than ever to bring your organization's brand colors to life on our sites. Back to that news post I created using the authoring copilot earlier. It's now ready to be sent out. Now I can go ahead and post it. But with our new feature for sending this in email, I can meet users where they are. So I can go ahead and click email preview and it'll give me a preview of exactly what it's going to look like. And now I'm ready. So let's click post and send. And after a few seconds, it'll not only post it, but then I'll get prompted. I can go ahead and select an audience. So I'm going to go ahead and send this to Lydia and click send. And after a few seconds, Let's switch over to Outlook. Now I'm in Outlook and delivered an email. Here's another look at another one that got sent earlier. I mean, this feature I quite like that you can share to people, but we have seen this a lot with news articles and things like this in the past before. And actually, I rather have a summary so it encourages people to come to the actual full page rather than having the full page display to them, discouraging them from going to the wider SharePoint site. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe. If you've got any questions at all, you can ask them in the comments feed below.